What I'd like to highlight for you is some of the new micromedical equipment. Micromedical has become the leading manufacturer of, uh, of vestibular equipment in the last few years. And uh, uh, so I'd like to kind of highlight their new VNG equipment and then to show you their new V-HIT equipment and, and how, these things, uh, how these things are used. This is their new air caloric stimulator. This is called Air FX, uh, Air FX, uh, FX uh, for FX. But the advantage of it is if you've got an air caloric from uh, just a generation ago, it's probably pretty big, pretty heavy, and pretty loud. In fact, you want to shut it off when you're not using it because it's pretty loud. This thing is silent, relatively silent. Uh, you would hardly know that it's running. And uh, another important thing about air calorics, and I'm sure you know that if you use one, is you have to be able to hit the eardrum with the, with the, the, uh, with the air. If you don't, all you're going to do is heat up or cool down the external meatus, and the patient will have no response. You'll have a false positive. That's the most common thing that happens for first-time users of caloric stimulators. Uh, so you have to see where you're going. And um, even though this equipment had advanced to the point where there was an otoscopic delivery head so you can see the eardrum, the otoscopes were terrible and you really couldn't see the eardrum. So we would tell students, look into the ear and do an otoscopic examination with a conventional otoscope and so that you know where you're going. Well, one thing they did when they designed this, and, and, and as one of the consultants for the company said, the, the biggest problem with this is it's too heavy and too, too bulky, the otoscope, and you can't really see anything through it. So we need it to be bright enough we need it to be a good otoscope, and we, not, we need it to be nice and light so it's easy to manipulate, and that is uh, compared to the others. Another thing that we said, it's too noisy. We want this thing to be quiet. We want it to be lighter if that's possible. And even though these are air calorics, they still have water in them. It's used in the uh, cooling process, and even when you heat the air, you still have to use a cooling mechanism, otherwise it will overheat. Anyway, so there's water in it. And in all of the older systems, you had to disassemble it in order to get at the reservoir where you would add water. And you would have to periodically add water. They want you to use distilled water. So we told them when you design the new one, um, put something on the outside so that the user doesn't have to disassemble it and have a tool case with them just to, just to add water. So it's very easy uh, place right here to add water to it. Uh, in fact, with, when you use it with the micromedical system, it, the whole thing is controlled by the computer and the temperatures are preset and all of that, unless you want to temporarily change the temperature. Like suppose you weren't getting a, a good, let, let's say you weren't getting a response with the typical temperatures of 24 and 50 degrees for caloric stimulus. And you, want, you wanted to uh, do ice water, but you didn't really want to do ice water, but you wanted a stronger stimulus just because you wanted to make sure you, that, that the labyrinth wasn't dead. And so uh, you can easily turn this down to 10 or 5 degrees centigrade, which would simulate ice water, be pretty cold, it'd be a much stronger stimuli, but you can easily turn that down within seconds and, and just use that if you want to make sure that, uh, that you could get a response if you had a stronger stimulus. So these are very, these, these new calorics are excellent. Uh, so now you can actually use that and see exactly where you're going and have a much better chance at getting uh, a good response the first time and not have to worry about so many false positive uh, responses. This is their new uh, water caloric, which is called the Aqua Stim. Uh, and again, it is quiet, it is small, it's lightweight, it has a very convenient way of uh, delivering it, that little delivery gun, uh, and it's easy to add water to it. Uh, it heats up quickly, 
You don't have to wait forever for it to, uh, to heat up. So the new micromedical VNG system has got a lot of advantages. It has one of the things that we complained about with VNG systems from the very beginning is that the goggles were very uncomfortable. They were too heavy and very uncomfortable. So this is the lightest and most comfortable goggles that we've ever had. Uh, in fact, I can wear them for an hour and not be screaming. With all of the other systems previous to this, after I'm wearing them for 15 minutes, I'm saying, I've got to get this thing off. I can't stand it uh, because it was so uncomfortable. And uh, there are no mechanical adjustments on it. The adjustments that we used to have to center the eye vertically and horizontally, they don't exist. Uh, that is all done electronically. You just click on the software. Uh, in fact, one button and it centers automatically. Uh, so there's no mechanical adjustments. Uh, it automatically tracks the pupil no matter what and has very, very high resolution and very fast uh, sampling rates. So it doesn't, you don't need to remove all of the makeup, uh, the mascara that you used to uh, have to do because it, it's just a higher resolution tracking. Uh, and we had a hard time. We used to complain when we were doing the hall pike maneuver because you wanted to uh, have your hands free to be able to manipulate the patient to bring them down. OK, here we go. Turn your head to the right. All right, one, two, three. We're going to come down. Don't worry, I got you. All right, you're doing a hall pike maneuver. Well, so you want to be able to start the recording while your hands are free on the patient to do that. And so we thought of all ways to do it. Well, first there was the foot pedal. And you would push the foot pedal when you're ready. But of course, you'd just be all set to do this. And now, where's the foot pedal? You know? Oh, I hit it twice, and now it went to something else. Uh, and so that was OK, but a little bit awkward. And then they came up with remote things. So you could start it with the remote. You have the remote hanging there. But I said, that's not good enough. Um, you, both hands are on the patient. You don't have a third hand to grab to the remote and hit start even. Uh, so they were smart enough to actually put a little button on the, uh, on the goggles where you can get at it quickly and easily with the hand that you might have supporting the patient's head. And you could start the system this way. So when you push that, it started the timer, it started the recording and everything, and you could bring the patient down. And you didn't have to fumble around trying to uh, start, the, uh, start the tracing. Another thing they did is got rid of light bars. A light bar is now obsolete. So we're using a flat screen TV for all of the oculomotor stimulus. And anywhere from a 32 inch to a 55 inch flat screen TV. And the beauty of it is when we're not doing oculomotor testing, the patient's eyeballs, two eyeballs, are gigantic right on that screen. So if, if you have a, uh, a response to, to the um, hall pike maneuver, if you have rotary nystagmus or anything like that, you can't possibly miss it because you've got two giant eyeballs staring right at you. It's, it's a brilliant idea. Uh, and a lot of times, engineering doesn't think of these things. They don't think of these things because they've never been in the real world. They've never been out of their laboratory. So they need real world people like us to, to join them as consultants and uh, advisory boards to tell them what we need to make things better. And this is a good example of it. So you see this patient is sitting on the edge of an exam chair and he's, uh, he's looking at a flat screen TV and he happens to be doing optokinetics. We had a hell of a time with optokinetics when we used light bars. Because you would just see a series of red dots moving across the light bar. And usually you get no response out of that. You have to tell the patient, OK, count them as they go by the center. Well, that's not an optokinetic response. That's, a track, that's, that's simply tracking or slow pursuit as he watches that. He counts them as they go by the center. A true optokinetic response is non-voluntary. You don't count anything. You just look at that and you get it. Uh, and the trick to making that work is when it's big enough to 
to fill uh, a very a high percentage of the patient's visual field. Well, with this, it's easy to do. I usually have the patient one meter, 39 inches, or maybe even 36 inches, three feet, away from that monitor. And if you use a 42-inch or bigger monitor, that's practically the entire visual field. And, you, and Richard Gans says, when you instruct somebody on, on optic and X, you just say, just look at that, be vague. You shouldn't have to do anything, and the optic and X response should be perfect. And with this, it is. It's a major improvement. Here's a close-up uh, look at their, their new goggles. There are only two adjustments on it, these two right up here, and they are for focus, and you, they're, it's very easy to adjust it. The focus wasn't perfect, but you hardly ever have to even touch those. It would be just once in a blue moon that you would. But that's very comfortable. Another thing that Micromedical has now is a rotary chair for a reduced price. Uh, we just put a uh, rotary chair in a new balance center at Children's Hospital. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a full featured rotary chair. Uh, and uh, the, the balance centers, pediatric balance centers, like in Cincinnati and Boston, you heard this morning, uh, they, they have similar equipment same manufacturer, Micromedical, and, uh, but those things are expensive. And a lot of private practices can't afford that. It's typically around $125,000, rotary chair with the enclosure. Well, Micromedical came up with a less expensive rotary chair. It doesn't ha use it an enclosure. And that same rotary chair is not only a clinical rotary chair uh, without the enclosure, but it also is going to serve as the exam chair. When you're doing calorics, for example, it'll go automatically to a perfect 30 degree position. Uh, and, uh, and you can do whatever testing you're going to do sitting. You can do supine. You can do the whole pikes on here. You can do the calorics on there and do rotary. Uh, and it's a rotary chair at the same time without the enclosure. Of course, the patient is wearing the uh, wearing the goggles and the covers on so that they're in darkness. And you keep the room uh, dimly lit while you're at it. And instead of being $125,000, this is $69,000. Still expensive, but more affordable for more clinics than the, uh, the typical. This is what uh, Richard Gans uses in his. There is an option on a micromedical um, VNG system, and their option is called Vortec. There are different ways of measuring the vestibular ocular reflex. And that option is $8,900, but it includes V-HIT, vestibular autorotational test, and the dynamic visual acuity test that you heard about this morning. And uh, when the presenter this morning talked about the subjective visual vertigo, uh, vertical, by the way, uh, if you were in that presentation this morning, you heard about that test and how effective it is for identifying a unilateral vestibular loss. Well, I thought, wow, that's great. If you have a rotary chair, it's an option in the rotary chair. And naturally, you have a nice dark room and it presents a laser. Uh, but the presenter this morning uh, mentioned an app, right? And so right away, I downloaded the app. I don't know if you got it, Vic. Uh, it's three dollars and ninety nine cents, and I thought, boy, this is perfect uh, because all you do when you when you use this app is uh, is you, you you get a vertical line. Uh, what 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 they were doing in Boston is they were taking their iPhone, they just put some Velcro on the back of it, and they would put it in a bucket, like a you know six gallon drum bucket. And they would paint the inside of the bucket black. And they'd have, so you've got this vertical line. And you start the app. And you tell the patient to turn the bucket until that line is vertical, straight up and down. Right? You can do it with pediatric patients, too. Uh, and you get the app going. And then you tell them to do that. The app will automatically stop. You can tell it 10, 15, or 20 seconds. And then you just press a button on the app. And it tells you how close to vertical that was 
whether it was zero or whether it was, you know, two degrees off and anything over three degrees off uh, indicates a problem, as our presenter this morning has said. But this is a way to do it with a, a bucket, right, and, uh, and a, a, a $3.99 app. So it's a test that would be uh, useful in a lot of places. Well, this has a dynamic visual acuity test, too, the eye chart test. Uh, but it's done in a way that has an automatic metronome in it and uh, records the results. They have been working, and I was on the advisory board for this, but Micromedical has been working on new software. And nobody has this new software yet, but of course it hasn't been released yet. Uh, but the, uh, the current Micromedical VNG systems uh, can be upgraded to, to this software when it is released in the future. Uh, it was a good project, but this is it's really good. It's like taking the best of what was, what was available and putting it into this, uh, this new software. So anybody that has a relatively current uh, micro-medical system can upgrade to that when it comes out.